presentation is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little more back and forth, but I'm going to be talking about a lot of stuff in Unity, 3D physics, weird physics, and basic stuff that's scary. <laughs> so, talking about basic stuff that's scary, I'm going to start off with rotation. And um, so a lot of people get into 3D and uh, rotation is immediately like the most terrifying thing. Like it's, it's weird because coordinates make sense. When you're from going from 2D to 3D, it's, you know, you go left, you go up, whatever. For 3D, you just add another one of those. But for rotation, it gets a lot more complicated. So I'll go ahead and start with uh, Euler rotations. And I've been training myself all day to try to get to, to say it right in my head. Because <laughs> I read it, and I see Euler, and it's not pronounced like that. It's Euler. So go ahead and start that. Uh, Let's see. Let's start with this sphere here. So I've got a sphere, and I had a script that uses my controller that I should plug in. To, uh, <laughs> basically, the control the rotation. Yeah, here we go. So I go left, cool. I go right, cool. Whoa. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> okay, so the way this rotation works is just if you use anything 3D, 3D modeling or any kind of 3D, you should probably know how this works. So basically you've got three axes. You've got your X, Y, and Z. And so there's three lines. And basically the way an Euler rotation works is you grab one of these and you turn it, and that's it. So it works really well for some things. So for example, I have a plane here. And so when you want movement to be very relative and very locked to a certain thing, it can be really helpful to just do Euler rotation, Euler rotations. This would be a bad drinking. <laughs> so, I pull one way. I always want the nose to go in the same way when I go up or down. Okay, that's cool. I go left or right. Yeah, that makes sense. And I can press the triggers to kind of roll. It doesn't look quite look like a plane, but you know. It works, because I always want the rotation to go in the same way, and it just kind of fits with the way that the 3D model works. So it's really useful for yeah. something. Is that a cop mirror of your plane? Don't worry about it. It's complicated. There we go. Oh, whoa. Okay. <laughs> so, like I said, it's really good for some things, uh, but sometimes that's not quite what you want. So, like with our sphere here. If I start off by going forward, it goes forward, it goes back. But then as soon as that gets skewed, mm -hmm. I can't control it. Because it's based on the rotation of the object. So that's where quaternions come in. And uh, they can be kind of scary. <laughs> but so basically the way that I found, uh, the way it was explained to me, that kind of works out, is instead of this, what you have is a bunch of numbers. You don't really have to worry about the numbers anymore. Let's say you have a sphere here. That makes it a sphere. Um, <laughs> so instead of these arbitrary uh, angles that you're grabbing it by, you think of it as you take a couple numbers and you say, I'm going to stab it through this axis. And then I'm going to come out this many units and go this many units to rotate it. So it's like you have something, you stick it in there, and that's the axis you're rotating on. You come out this much, and you go that much. That's the basics of quaternions. And the nice thing is, in Unity, you don't have to really do the math anymore. Hmm. They've added a lot of functions that make it really easy to do. So I'll go ahead and switch my sphere over here to my 
the tiny in rotation. Oh, and I'll go ahead and show you the script for uh, both of these. <coughs> Maybe I didn't update Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. It takes a second. Yeah. Always. How's your hair? That local sports team. Local. <laughs> sports okay, ball. Here we go. Little oh, sports ball. God damn it. <laughs> I have to sign in to Visual Studio. Uh, I might as well do this because I'm going to be using it later. Yes, yeah, mode so. develop really sucks. Yeah, it does. Can you get a dark theme in, in model develop? Like black? Nope. Yes. yes. No, you can't. Yes, you can. It's against the rules. Illegal. It won't make your life any better. Well, so, so the important thing I'm doing here is uh, <laughs> I'm using a rigid body and add relative torque. And that's all there is to it. Uh, a lot of your rigid body functions will take a lot of the work out of this, but I could also do this with uh, transform.euler angles. Euler angles? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, okay, so I'll go ahead and turn that off. And the only difference here is now, instead of adding relative torque, I'm just adding torque. But I'm... Uh, no, that's it. Cool. The nice thing is Unity handled a lot of this stuff for you. It, it didn't used to, but now I'm pushing forward, I'm pushing right. It just goes the way you would expect it to do based on world coordinates instead of these Euler rotations. And so that's Quaternion rotation, but it hides it from you. And so that's the, I mean, that's the basic way you do it. You don't even have to do anything anymore. Now we go to this. Okay, so I'll start with <coughs> the basic Euler tilt on this. And you know, what? Thank you. I'm going to maximize We're just going to watch it be over there. So, oh, this rigid body <laughs> likes to go to sleep, so i got to grab it and drop it. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, rigid bodies like to go to sleep. Okay, so the basic Euler rotation, it rotates around the, the uh, origin of the model. Hmm. So you notice it's that front wheel there. Um, I would have to go into the modeling program to change where that is. There's like some editor scripts you can get to do it, but it's kind of a pain to change the origin of a model. Uh, but it's always rotating around the same point no matter what. So say I wanted to do Finally. something different. What if I wanted to always balance around the ball? So that's So there's a cool method that Unity has now called rotate around. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like first and then explain it a little bit. Okay, so you notice now my plane is rotating around where the ball is. That's so I can, uh, I can do it. Really right. cool. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can like roll it around and keep going. So when I'm passing it, it takes a couple variables here. The first one is the point you want to rotate around. So uh, I forgot to talk about vector threes. If you don't know what vector threes are, and it's very core, it's just a pair of three numbers, but it can represent three things in 3D space. It can re represent a point, a direction, or a rotation. So the Euler rotations are one example of this. Another example is the point, and that's just your basic coordinates. And then there's a direction. So a direction would be just like from here to here, but it's not like any point in 3D space. And so the first variable I'm passing is the 
position that I want to rotate around. So I just use the position of the ball for that. And then for this axis that I want to, uh, so that's like the position of this axis. And then I take the direction that I want to rotate around, and I say I want transform dot forward is the forward of the plane. So I want to rotate around the forward of the plane, but I want to make that the uh, point of the ball. And then the tilt would uh, is just I'm taking that from the controller, and that's how much you're going out here. The direction also affects this line because uh, vector three direction can not only be a direction but also a length. And so I say I I take the point and that affects the center of this. The forward is the direction but also the distance out and then the tilt is how much I'm turning around. So that's rotation. Does anyone have any questions? Huh? Cool. Well, that, uh, on these rotate round the four one of the things I noticed, well, one thing I couldn't figure out was how to uh, how to have an offset from the pivot point. So if you imagine placing a camera on the outside of that sphere, let's say the sphere is transparent, and you have a the camera's on the out, on the edge of the sphere looking to the center, you can rotate the camera around it in, in every direction. Yeah, sure. Just swipe. So <coughs> let's let's try something. Say right now the plane is rotating around where the ball is, but maybe you just want to rotate where the ball is above, but you still want to rotate around where the plane is. So it would be a point on the plane, but that the ball is above. So I don't know the exact distance I'm going to guesstimate here, but it should be pretty easy to do. But you're not using the uh, Euler red. A rotation no, point. this is still going to be our rotate around. So let's just take this ball position minus vector three dot down times let's say point five. And this is a really handy function. Say anytime you want to get distance in a three D space, this is a really shorthand way to do it. Assuming you want to lock to a uh, constraint of whatever object it is. So you want to get five units in front of this object. Mm. You can just do vector three dot forward times five. Because vector three dot forward or down or up is always one unit long. So let's mm. see what this does. I actually haven't used unit that much. Is unit can you change unit size? No, it's based on a meter. Okay. So unit's consistent. So maybe I went a little too short, but the plane is kind of staying in the same spot now. I'm going to try that a little bit longer. Let's just take that off and see what one unit down looks like. You're subtracting by down, meaning it's going up. Yeah, you're subtracting by down. Yeah, I'm wanting to rotate around the lower point. You need to add down. Don't oh, yeah, put right. zero, zero you're right. in your no, <laughs> Okay, there we go. So now we're rotating approximately at a point on the plane where the sphere is above. Do a draw right too. Yeah, if I wanted to do it right, I would uh, actually measure that distance. But I'll go ahead and get on to the next thing. <coughs> so next up we have the dreaded wheel colliders. <laughs> So, what I've made did you, here... How much time did you spend <laughs> making this Hot Wheels track? All that <laughs> asset store stuff. So this is actually one of the Unity standard asset demos. Okay, so I have a car here with some very basic uh, wheel collider set up that don't work very well, and we're going to make it work well together. Uh, so what I've got is I've got this with the control script. Um, I've got a body with a collider on it and a bunch of wheels with their own wheel colliders on it. So these are just the default 
settings for a wheel collider, except for the radius. Uh, you want to make the radius a little bit bigger than the wheel, just because I, I don't know it says to. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see how this performs. And I'm actually going to lock the camera onto the side so we can see the wheels. <coughs> Alright, here we go. Alright, it's going. It's not going very fast, but it's going. I can turn my wheels. Great. Oh, what's happening Real with slow. The back? What's that? What's happening with the back of the right camera? It's just reflections. Oh. Oh, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I got some wheel colliders. So you'll also notice down here. I'm printing the slip value. And uh, that's something very important that I'm about to talk about. How did you lock the camera in the, in the uh, scene view? Oh, it's, it's a handy shortcut. So if I don't do anything, uh, let's say I click on something else. That's the normal view. Yeah. What you do is control, or just click on it, put your mouse in the uh, editor window and hit F. Yep. And that'll lock to it. If you hit F twice, it locks on. Huh. Ooh. So that's really handy for stuff like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pro tips. Okay, so those don't just work see very well. Um, so maybe the car... I did increase the size, of the, the mass of the car. So these are default wheels. What if we use default weight? <laughs> No, <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work very well. Uh, so defaults are not very good right now. Um, even if we increase it by a substantial amount, it's not very good. I found that uh, wheel colliders work really well at more <laughs> realistic like car weights because that's kind of what they're made for. <laughs> So I mean that's a little too heavy. Let's let's go down to like all right. Let's try that. Still pretty slow. How about we take this power variable here? Is just what I am uh, setting the torque speed to on the back two wheels. So in your script, you have a couple of uh, variables. You have torque speed and brake speed. And torque speed can be positive or negative, and brake speed, I don't know what negative does, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> brake. So this is already performing a bit better. Look at this video game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you notice, These so I'm about to get into the slip values down here. You, you can see there, well, when I hit, they spiked quite a bit. But you notice when I'm going at a decent speed, they're hovering about 0.1. <coughs> so let's take a look at these. They're on each wheel. So there's a lot of variables here. Uh, it's kind of crazy. So we've got extremum slip, extreme value, asymptote slip uh, for forward and sideways. So let's try taking these up so I can see if that does anything. We don't need to worry about sizes. Right All right, so watch the back wheel here. As it goes away. Oh, damn, it's gone. Shut up. <laughs> right. So that's looking pretty good, but it looks like it's spinning a bit faster. And if you notice in, on my slip values, it's higher than what it was before. So what if we try, let's go nuts. Oh. Ian, are all these scripts that you're messing with? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I think what? provided with the scene, or are they provided with the asset, or did you have to write all the scripts yourself? The control script is what I'm using for, uh, it's, it's stuff I wrote for the last Ludum Dare. 
So it's from my living room. Okay, so I crank those up and the wheel is just spinning out of control. <laughs> like, it is not cool. Look at this Mikey Racer's car. <laughs> this is Asset Store. I clicked on free. No, I mean like this, the way the wheels move. Yeah. Okay, so that's obviously bad. We don't want that. What if we take these down real low? So that's starting to look more like it. So, let me explain these weird variables that you get. So we've got our extremum slip, extremum value, asymptote slip, asymptote value, and stiffness. So, wheel colliders in Unity have this thing called the friction curve. And their ideal chart <coughs> So what a lot of people do, and I've seen tutorials that do this, they'll show you how to set up the wheel colliders and then they'll say, this stuff's kind of weird, just crank that up to like 10,000 and it'll work. <laughs> um, <coughs> so that's supposed to be one. <laughs> so when you crank it up to 10,000, it just kind of breaks things. Um, so basically your value is going to be the friction threshold where it sets the slip number. The slip is how much your tires are skidding. So if your slip is at one, that means your tires are making no friction at all, they're just spinning out. So for high, <coughs> so the extremum is right here and the asymptote is here. And that's a basic way of saying like, at your max speed, you're going to skid a lot, but then, so you start off not skidding at all, you burn out, and then you get into a normal where it's kind of skidding. Uh, and, and this is after it's caught up to speed. So you start out here at zero, and you kind of go over this curve. So the, the important takeaway from this is that your ranges are zero to one, <laughs> Don't blow them out because it just it'll give you a nightmare because it, it, would, it just won't make sense. Things will start flying into the air. So that's the basics. I, it's also important to know that uh, these are tuned to work with heavier bodies. If you notice on these, the spring value is already 3,500, so that would explain why I was launching into the air immediately. Hmm. Um, if you make your suspension higher, that can be a good thing because you're making contact with the ground more around turns. So you can get even more uh, good friction, but it'll also lower your wheels off the ground. Also, uh, these wheels are animated by code. The wheel collider does not animate your wheels for you. It's just this static thing uh, that you put on your wheels, but you have to uh, tell the wheels what rate to spin at. Mm. Luckily you have an RPM variable, so you can just uh, kind of tie that to the animation. Cool. And the last thing is to get it to perform better, they recommend, you see there's a little circle under each of these, and that is the, uh, what do they call it, the force act point distance. So that's basically where you're applying force to your main rigid body. Mm. And so if you think about it, tire wheels aren't applying force to the car on the ground. They're applying it on their axis. So you want to set this to slightly under the center of gravity. And the car will hit, behave better for that. Yeah. Is it running now though? <laughs> I mean, you would set your wheels to animate based on the suspension. I didn't do that. Oh. 
I don't think we're going to have a lot of luck with Loop de Loop. I don't think it can. Just set the force. I need it in this. Make it go fast. I go fast. No, that's not fast. I at least like 5,000. That's just stupid. That's not a real number. That's See, that. this just goes to prove bigger numbers are not always better. No, it's great. Just keep going. What you need you is, is, what you need is a simulated Yeah, clearly. So, uh, that, that is a good point that Nick brings up as a joke. Uh, <coughs> no, it wasn't a joke. Well, fair enough. <laughs> Nothing I say is ever a joke. <laughs> so, it, it is actually important if you're planning to actually make a card game. I, I did this a little That's bit with this. Um, if you're using wheel colliders, shut up. <laughs> um, gearing is actually very important just due to the nature of tires. Um, you need to start off at low torque, and as your RPMs increase, just increase the torque. So I have a script that does about three levels of difference between the RPM and the <laughs> Yeah. So there are kind of gears in this, but uh, it's something you need to do if you're doing, if you want to go fast. Yes. <laughs> so the last thing I'm going to talk about is uh, something I do. Wiggly arms. Wiggly arms. So we're going to basically go into how Duello is made. All right, so I got this little guy set up. Again, thank you, Asset Store. And I just did a basic uh, ragdoll on him. And I put a script on his chest piece. I made the chest piece kinematic. And I put a script so I can just kind of shake him around. So here we go. I can go forward and back. And there's a slight change that you might want to know about. I don't remember this from Jason. I don't remember Jason. Gasp. Sean. He's got a lot of bones here. He's giving me like a Super Mario Nation body. Like Thunderbirds. <laughs> so, there's this little uh, enable projection here. I took that off just now. That's important. <laughs> it's real important. <laughs> it's real important. It's oh, never God. checked. That's what happens when it's off. <laughs> it's force off. It's force off. off. Never turn it on. Never. <laughs> okay. So we've got this guy. He's got a sword. He kind of moves around. That's cool. Uh, whatever. Let's make him swing that sword. So it's basically going to take you through the way I did it in Duello. It's not the only way to do it, it's not the best way to do it, but it's a fast way to do it and it looks funny. <laughs> so, instead of doing this in the modeler, like I did not do in Duel, that's not the bone I want. Rotate around the pivot, that's important. Why, why is your sword not attached? Uh, so just the sword. Let's just fix that. Yeah, I'll stick that. Stick that to your hand. Okay. So we're going to get him in a sword fighting stance, like a proper warrior. <laughs> Done. Yep, we did it. Shit it. <laughs> is this real sword if fighting? You can, <laughs> you can do it to get away If you're at sword fighting, this is it. First time you have to do it. There we go. Yeah. Alright, so the rigid body, or the, the ragdoll, gives us a couple things right out the gate. Um, we've got these limits here that set the twist. You'd probably want to do this in your modeler, but I don't care about any of that. I'm going to put some springs on it. <laughs> It's been a while since I've done this. It might be supposed to be a hinge joint, but we'll figure it out. So, <laughs> upper arms connect to the forearm. 
you missed an opportunity to say that so the arm bones can fit to the hand bone. <laughs> Break force infinity. Mm. Yeah, we want Torque that. Torque infinity. <laughs> can you just type infinity into a number field as a unity? Yeah. yeah. That's programming. <laughs> 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 Just type no. Break force no. Force no. Nope. And you can use variables in those fields, right? <laughs> you can use whatever you want, man. I believe in using your whatever you want. Look at this idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, just the scale of man's. Yeah, I need to set up the anchor. What? He's got a very specific expression, but I can't put my finger on it. He's very happy. It's skeleton. No, it's like this is any blood bowl character. Yeah, <laughs> any any given blood bowl. Yeah. He just saw somebody else realize that somebody else farted. <laughs> What, is that the face of Schadenfreude? Yes! Ske skeletal Schadenfreude. It's really hard to see this, but there's a little yellow arrow there, or orange, that I'm trying to move. You just saw somebody walk into a creeper above. Lurker above, that's a word. I'm going to set that there. We definitely want to use this screen. Needed a little animation right now. So what what exactly is it that you're setting up right now? So I'm setting up uh this springy joint between, so these capsule colliders on the arm are where these physics are handled. They're very, the colliders for the rigid bodies that are on these bodies. So I'm setting up basically springs between them in order to keep them in the position that I want. I had messed up some. Do they need to be spring joints and not inch joints? Hinge joints, oh, I need to click use spring, that's what I need to do. <laughs> oh, got you here. So a lot of Action. physics stuff is just uh, messing with it. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I see from Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Animated gifs of people messing with it. That's why I'm doing it live. Yeah. Do it live. Showing you the process. Well, okay. yes. There it goes. Whether or not we replicate how Duello looks, we're going to replicate how Duello was made. <laughs> live? Yeah. <laughs> I think you need to set the, uh... Set it to Alright, so yeah. it's starting to be something. Oh! That certainly did something. This is me. Things are happening. You can do it so, like that. Yeah, you <laughs> could start this off. Like, he's swinging the sword at the camera. Yeah. If you use your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> This is some like kung fu grip action. <laughs> Wait, five. Five. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Slide those numbers to the right. So you see something. <laughs> no yeah. middle sliders. Look, it's working. It, it, it's closer. If you look at the side view, no middle sliders. A lot closer than what I want. 
or what I started with. Whoop. Ooh. No, hey. Physics are also finicky, so <laughs> you be prepared for that. So like I said, this is the, the easy way to do it. It's also, <laughs> by all means, the wrong way to do it. Uh, I'm starting to experiment with like IKs and stuff, so I can just actually use kind of more traditional animation and just uh, tell it where the hand needs to be. Wow, there's a lot of distance between us. <laughs> <laughs> there's something going wrong. <laughs> yeah, real fun. Yep. He's messed up. <laughs> He's all messed up. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Next game, can you just make that and do that? Damn it. Well, I mean, I can do a lot of them. Uh, like Shutter and... Yeah. Shutter <laughs> and like I can see this being yeah, used for one of my games. <laughs> Hey. Yeah, so there you go. So, so this is the easy way. The kind of middle of the road way is like I said, you use inverse kinematics to take a traditional animation and say, I want the hand to be like this. And that just figures out how to move the arm to get to that. And so you can just use that and... Uh, for arms and legs, that works great. Uh, the cool way <laughs> is to take something like this, but instead of doing these hinge joints, you make spring joints at targeted locations to make actual muscles, and you write AI to control those muscles to actually expand and contract like human muscles. But would. no one would ever do that. Except <laughs> people are doing it. It's awesome. Crazy enough to do that. Doing it live. So yeah. <laughs> Does anybody have any just Unity physics questions? Uh, other than why? <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, anime <laughs> gifts is the, the <laughs> primary reason. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you put that right there on Twitter as an animated GIF, and it will blow up. Oh yeah. You found my little bit scrap. You'd be like, game dev is hard, and never. No, Makena. Yeah, yeah, game dev is hard. <laughs> <laughs> game, 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 hashtag game dev. Yeah, my game dev is hard or something like that. Either this, that's the exact template for that. Where did you even find like a map for the Dragon Ball Z fights? Instead of a skeleton, uh, Mitsu is on the asset store under some rocks. <laughs> some rocks. Some rocks. Those are some rocks. I gotta Those say. Are some rocks. S E L. This is pretty great. This is, this yeah, is pretty this game great. rules. Yeah, the ga game. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is really fun. So this is for the arcade jam, right? Yes. Sure. Yeah. This is, it hits all the diversifiers already. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's, that's your co-op. You're that's just controlling best. different limbs. It's like yeah. a co-op yeah. game, but worse in every way. <laughs> One arm controls the sword. Are you try to move. It's, it's like clocks or chucks or something. It's for an arcade. Like three. Sure. Have you seen that? Every shitty vulture. Every shitty vulture. It's like nobody controls the skeleton. So the skeleton is just saying whatever he wants. I mean, this is just using a couple of joysticks, so it, it could be easily made random. So you're saying it's a dance party skeleton? Oh, yeah. I mean, well, obviously. that's wonderful. Put a DDR pad on there? Come on. I mean, if you ask me the difference between a dance party and a sword fight. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, you asked me the difference between a dance party, dance party and a skeleton. Very little. Very little. It, it's all in the music for both questions. Mm -hmm. Just start blaring bones up yeah. All right, so that's... Wow, that's... Yeah. We got like... That's, um, we can that right now. That's awesome. Yeah. We got about five minutes <laughs> Tragic. left here. So if you guys have any more questions, you can ask them. Otherwise, uh, just hang out. Awesome. Put the golden rectangle.